D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds, and welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this video, and you can check those out for yourself, or you can just watch this video where I'm going to read it to you. Um, but also, before we get started, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm. Small channels like mine, we just keep getting shoved to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. All right, you guys, now that we got that out of the way, why don't we go ahead and get started on these three stories? Okay, so for my first story this week, I'm going to go through the whole Wolverine everything, pretty much. Uh, they, they We got... Um, We've got a lot of stuff I'm going to go over. So I'm going to go over the costume, um, casting, uh, and then I want to go over the entire plot league. So just so you know, spoilers ahead. So get ready for that. And if you don't want the spoilers or whatnot, just uh, I'll I'll tell you when to cut out if you don't want to hear the plot league. But I'm going to go through it and everything and, and all that good stuff. All right, so the first thing I want to touch on is the fact that Jennifer Garner is reappearing as Elektra for Deadpool 3. Um, this is put out by The Hollywood Reporter. And it says the actress worked with star Ryan Reynolds and director Sean Levy in The Adam Project. Um, the Adam Project was just okay. So it says Jennifer Garner is picking up Elektra's uh, sigh once again. After a nearly 20-year hiatus, the actress is returning to the role of Marvel Comics assassin uh, for Deadpool 3, multiple sources tell The Hollywood Reporter. Um, the, the Hollywood Reporter isn't the only person that I heard this or seen this from or whatnot. Um, I'm not going to go through this whole article because, again, I will mention it later on. But uh, it said it says there she is as a lecturer right there. She uh, Jennifer Garner is great. I just want to share a small story. I met Jennifer Garner one time. I tell people I met Jennifer Garner one time, but this is how we we met. OK, I was at a crosswalk. She was, she came up and, and I was waiting to, you know, get the little, the little walkie person and she stepped up next to me and I just looked over and I saw, and I was like, oh my God, like, I didn't say that out loud, but inside I was freaking out. And I was just like, I just, it was like, I really like your movies a lot. She was like, oh, thank you. And then we crossed the street. That's how I met Jennifer Gardner. But she was, she was very nice and very lovely and very beautiful in real life. I'll tell you what she was, you know. But whatever, I was saying, say, Garner first played the Marvel assassin in 20th Century Fox Daredevil, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the 2023 feature that starred Ben Affleck as the man without fear, while in the film was, while the film was not a hit, it did spawn the spinoff with Jennifer Garner, uh, top lining solo act Electra two years later. Um, now it says her involvement in Deadpool 3 hints. At some sort of multiverse angle to the film that has long been rumored, and it is possible that other characters from the Marvel films made by Fox could pop up, and they will. I did a video about it. Uh, uh, you know, you can check it out and everything in the iCard section, but we'll talk about that later on. So that's Jennifer Garner in the movie, and we'll continue to talk about that after I get done with uh, the this one. So the next thing I want to talk about is Boom. This. Okay, so it says Deadpool 3. This comes from comic book movie or comicbook.com, uh, and this says, uh, Deadpool 3, which Wolverine suit is Hugh Jackman wearing? Now, if you guys saw this photo, boom, it uh, dropped online from uh, Ryan Reynolds himself. He put it on Instagram, and he dropped this photo. I will look at a different photo of this, and it's Wolverine right here. I just want to say right off the bat, I love this outfit. I think it's great. I think it's really going to pop on on film and everything. I think that I did see some people say they didn't like it, but I I love it. I think it's great. I don't know about the shoulder pads, but that's not something that I'm like, you know, it's a deal breaker for me personally. I just I love this so much. I think it's really, really great. And um, I can't wait to see this now. Let me just pop this down there. We're going to read a tiny, tiny bit of this article before we get into the whole plot league. And we're just going to with this part right here. And it says. Hugh Jackman is finally putting on the yellow spandex, more or less, in Marvel Studios' Deadpool 3, with Ryan Reynolds revealing his co-star donning a comics-accurate Wolverine costume for the first time in his in his record-setting uh, tenure as Logan in the X-Men movies. And Marvel Cinematic Universe fans are loving it. Yes, we are. It looks fantastic. However, Wolverine has many 
has had many suits throughout his nearly 50 year existence in the Marvel Universe. Which one is Hugh Jackman wearing in Deadpool 3? Not the one most people seem to think. Hugh Jackman, uh, Jackman's Deadpool 3 Wolverine costume support uh, sports the iconic blue and yellow color scheme that most fans associate with Wolverine. That's led them to assume that Jackman's look is modified version of Wolverine's best known costume, the one featured in X Men: The Animated Series. So uh, this is this is uh, you know from uh, this is from the comic books. Uh, the Astonishing X-Men. Not my favorite, but it was fine. But we're going to take a look at this closer. Boom. There it is right there. And then here is the one from the comic books from the 90s, uh, the, you know, look. And I, I do hope that he wears the mask. I have a feeling he won't wear the mask, which I guess is fine. It'll kind of bum me out if he doesn't. But you can just see, I mean, he doesn't have the little spiky things with the boots, which is fine, which is fine. Um, but I think that, from comic to to and then this is not the one the 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 one from the astonishing x-men is what this one really is more like but still it looks great you guys i'm loving it i think it's great i can't wait to see it on film i just i just really think they did a top-notch job with this with this costume and i love it all right you guys so that i'm going to just tell you right now that we are going to move over to the uh plot leak if you do not want to know about the plot leak, then you need to bail out now and then um, fast forward to my second story, but we're just going to do it now. So this was on Reddit and it says another 4chan Deadpool 3 leak. Now, I have to be honest with you. I heard some people say that this is real and I have to admit that if this is real, this sounds exciting. So let's read through this. So it says uh, this. I'm not going to. So it says uh, Deadpool 3. Is, this says to take it with a mountain of salt, and I say to take it with a grain of salt, you guys, because this could be 110% wrong, but something but something tells me there's at least some, um, you know, some sort of truth to this. Okay, so it says, Deadpool is arrested for time crimes uh, by, by messing with, oh gosh, messing around with Cable's device at the end of Deadpool 2. Um, and you remember he went back to all those different movies and like he killed himself as as Deadpool from the first Wolverine movie and as Ryan Reynolds reading the uh, Green Lantern script and everything. So it says Cable and Domino do not appear, uh, but are but is mentioned by a judge, which I want to just so I'm, I think this is a bad idea to not bring back Domino and Cable. I think that they are just huge characters as far as Deadpool goes. But I hope that we do see, I don't think we're going to see these characters again, which bums me out. At least we won't see these iterations of them, which again, bums me out. I do like Cable and Domino, uh, these two characters from Deadpool 2. But, you know, what are you going to do? All right. So then it says, um, mentioned by Judge, the TVA Emma Corrin, that the TVA returned Cable to his original time period in exchange for confiscating his time travel technology. Now, Emma Corrin is right here. Now, they said that Emma Corrin was going to be playing the villain of this movie. And I don't, uh, now I just go, I don't know if she's going to be playing the villain of this movie. It sounds like she's just going to have a small role in this movie. And then that's it. You know, maybe a couple of scenes. I don't know. I don't know if Emma Corrin is, is going to be in a larger part of this because this is just a, a, a the, the plot synopsis, not a full on script. So I don't know how big of a role that Emma Corrin is going to be playing, but it sounds like not a very big one to me, which is fine. I, I And I have nothing against Emma Corrin. It's fine. I just I would like to see more action and it doesn't sound like Emma Corrin's judge is going to be action in this movie. It's just going to be her, um, you know, complaining. Um, let's see. The TVA is not found, uh, it's not fond of the X-Men movies, various methods of time travel, cable, Kitty Pride's mind projection, because they're a hassle to clean up. Before he's sentenced to, uh, assure Deadpool gets le uh, leniency due to the pleadings by a TVA agent paradox, Matthew McFadden. And that is this guy right here. That's Matthew McFadden, him from Succession. Very good. Watch it, I suggest. And I'm assuming, and I think this is the character paradox that he's playing. I don't know if this character is from the comic books. If it is, I personally don't remember him or whatnot, but I love Matthew McFadden. He's great. I've loved him ever since Pride and Prejudice. He's he's a really good actor. Um, So it says, 
uh, Matthew McFadden, who Deadpool insists on calling Bob because his name sounds too long, asking the judge to let him make up for his crimes by helping him on a mission for the TVA. So him and Paradox are going to go on a mission, apparently. So it says, when 616 Wanda died, her spirit uh, inhabited the body of 838 Wanda. However, the struggle for control damaged her mind, eviscerating the 838 Earth as a result. Um, so if you like, this is Wanda, of course. And I think that what happened was when when it did eviscerate that it turned into and this photo was released, got bleaked online of the set of Wolverine. So I'm assuming that Wanda takes over the body of this this other Wanda and that Wanda just destroyed this one. And then they talk about it in a minute. Just give me one second in this in this plot. But I think that, that you can see the Fox logo has been completely decimated. And you can see Wolverine right here. And there are other pictures out there. Uh, there's a rocket right here. I'm not quite sure what that is. But and then there was a video where um, Wolverine is like, got he, he ch cuts off Deadpool's leg and everything. It looked like a funny gag. I, I'm, I'm excited to see it. But it looks like Wanda just this is the destruction of the Fox universe. And I think that that's very clever because we're, you know, this is kind of a goodbye to the Fox universe and all its X-Men. So it says that Earth, as a result, A38 has been changed into a new world, House of M style, where uh, and then House of M. Now, if you didn't read House of M, that's where uh, Magneto basically, you know, wins kind of thing. And the Earth is inhabited by mutants mostly and everything. So this is Magneto right here and his family, um, you know, uh, Laris and then Starlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver and everything. And uh, they're kind of like royalty kind of thing. And uh, it's very, it, it was okay. House of M was okay. It wasn't my favorite, but it wasn't bad. Uh, yeah. So House of M style where Magneto, Ian McKella, and now Wanda's adoptive father. So here these two are, are they, uh, here these two are, Ian McKellen's Magneto and Wanda. I think this is kind of cool in the terms, this, uh, I do not know if, um, um, gosh, what's her face? Elizabeth, uh, the actress, is coming back as Wanda. Elizabeth Olsen. My gosh, those 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 twins. Uh, anyways, I don't know if she's coming back as Wanda. I, I think she said she's done. So this could be played by a completely different actress. I don't know if it is or not, but we'll see if it is. If if it isn't, if it is a different actress, I don't see why they wouldn't just say it, why they would say it's an adopted daughter because if you remember in apocalypse there is a little girl and quicksilver's sister and they have uh uh and then magneto's his dad kind of thing so it was really weird they the way they hooked that in together is so weird but anyways uh, magneto rules the earth and mutants are the majority of the population x-men styled after the 90s and here they are as the 90s costumes i can't wait to see this and i did a i did a video on this already about how the x-men from the x-men movies are coming back uh, James Marsden, Halle Berry, and Femke Jensen, and I'll I'll leave it in the iCard section and everything. But they're coming back for this movie, which should be exciting. I can't wait to see them. And if they're wearing their '90s designs, uh, yes, please. I'm excited to see that too, especially if they're in the vein of that Wolverine costume. That'll be really really cool. Um, let's see, design. Uh, but played by most of singer the singer cast work for Magneto to protect the mutant world from the human brotherhood made up of supporting some supporting characters, uh, characters including Nick Fury. Boom. There's old man Nick Fury, which if you're watching Secret Invasion, he sucks and uh, is broken. Um, but it'll be interesting to see him as a different Nick Fury in like an alternate universe. That'll be fun. So Nick Fury, Jimmy Woo. If you remember Jimmy Woo. Uh, I like uh, this actor. I don't remember his name, but I like this actor. And I like Jimmy Woo, the character. He's fun. I like him with his his card games, the uh, card tricks that he learned from Ant-Man. Super fun. Uh, Dopinder, this guy uh, in Dead, both the Deadpool movies. I love Dopinder. I'm glad he's coming back in this movie. I'm glad that they were able to work him in there. Um, and it should be fun to see what he does as like a rebel. You know, that'll be fun. Uh, so Dopinder and... Pete from Deadpool 2. Um, Pete, if you remember, he was a part of their team. I liked Pete. I thought it was funny. It'll be fun to see this guy come back and see what he does. Like if he's hard and everything, you know, from, from fighting the mutants in this world. Um, as well as a sympathetic Colossus, uh, uh, Yukio, uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and Wolverine. So you got Colossus, 
um, these two from from the Deadpool two. Uh, well, uh, Yokino was from Deadpool two, and then uh, Teenage Son- Negasonic Warhead was from there, and then uh, Colossus they're from Deadpool one, and then of course Wolverine. This nineties Wolverine are sympathetic, and I think that. I think that this will be really cool. These these four are kind of helping out these these mutants to uh, are these these humans to to stop the the mutant uh, regime that is in this this Earth. But I and it'll be really cool to see what they do there. So it says once Logan hears that time travel is possible, he hijacks Bob's TVA device to attempt to change history, which sends him through the various Fox world as well as a cameo by Channing Tatum as a future Gambit. Now, if you remember, Channing Tatum was supposed to be in a Gambit solo movie, but they couldn't get it to to go down. I guess there was was scheduling issues. There was was writing issues. Bella Donna was supposed to be in there. There was supposed to be some, you know, all this extra stuff. And I personally, I'm glad they canceled that movie because, you know, I mean, I have nothing against Channing Tatum, but he's not my, the best actor on the planet. But it was still, I still would have liked to have seen it, but not really. Like, I'm now that it, once it got canceled, I was like, now I want to see it. But um, I'm not really like, I mean, it'll be it'll be good to see. It'll be like The Flash, how they did with Nick Cage's Superman. And it'll be really interesting to see that whole situation go down. Um, let's continue with this. So it says, and eventually ending up in the events of X2, The Last Stand, where Wanda's alterations to history made Magneto's victory uh, over humanity come true. Uh, Deadpool enlists the Fox heroes who don't die in a fight against Magneto's forces in a redo of Last Stand's Golden Gate Bridge fight. Um, so we, um, oh gosh, sorry. Let me real quick just say. So also one of the the, the things that they're going to do is they're going to go to Jennifer Gardner and uh, Ben Affleck. I heard that Ben Affleck's going to come back also as dead uh, Daredevil. And uh, even though it's not in this league, but Elektra's going to be in it and Daredevil, they're going to go to their little world or whatever, kind of like they're doing with uh, uh, Channing Tatum's Gambit. Sorry, I had that image up and I didn't, or prepared, but I didn't. Uh, so if you remember the last stand battle at the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge lands on Alcatraz and then it goes to complete darkness. You remember that? It was weird. I don't like the last stand. I mean, there are a couple of things I do like about it, but overall, I just don't like that movie. Uh, but you remember last stand. So he's going to get those, uh, the, te- the, the team back together, kind of, and everything. So he enlists those mutants as, lo- as well as the Logan movie, Logan and X-23, uh, which these two, which will be nice because this actress is going to be in the Acolyte and it'll be nice to see um, him also play Logan from the movie. Love Logan. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Such a good movie. I loved it. It was great. Um, but speaking of that, I there are multiple uh, Wolverines in this movie and then there are also m- uh, multiple Deadpools in this movie. As you can see, it says right here, it says several different Deadpools, including one who's just Ryan Reynolds in a Wrexham shirt. Looked up Wrexham. I guess it's a football team in Europe or whatever. But yeah. So it looks like we're getting multiple Deadpools, which will be cool. I, I uh, heard that one we're definitely getting uh female Deadpool, which will be great. Now, another one that a lot of people want to see, but it has not been confirmed or leaked or anything is uh, Gwenpool. And they want Emma Stone to play Gwenpool. And I think that A, this will be great because I love Emma Stone and B, because I think that it'll, a lot of people like Gwenpool. I personally, Gwenpool's okay in my book. I, I just, uh, it's not my favorite. I'm like, whatever. I think she, a female Deadpool is better than Gwenpool, but that's all on me and, and my preferences and everything but i think that's cool that uh ryan reynolds is willing to not just be the only deadpool and he's willing to share that role with other people and i think it's right i think i like that and i think it's really cool of him and really cool of the movie so it says it spirals out of control and almost everyone dies including a massive amount of civilians a complete clusterfuck and once the dust settles wanda is depowered by the mutant cure so i think what they're doing is they're they're just switching out wanda for gene gray in that final battle instead of having gene gray we have wanda when that'll be interesting to see and the tva banishes her deadpool Paradox and the House of M Logan to the main MCU timeline, declaring them someone else's problem. I don't I don't like the TVA that they're doing this whole thing. I really wish they would. I'm I'm fine with this multiverse movie, but I really am tired of the multiverse when it comes to Marvel. They're just really screwing it up. And they I don't think that they know what they're doing over there. 
But this is how we're getting Wanda back in the MCU. And uh, I think that's kind of cool. Um, I Matthew McFadden's coming to the MCU. Great. I mean, it sucks that he's not a powered person, but what are you going to do? And then Logan is, uh, Wolverine is coming to it. But if it's Hugh Jackman, I don't want Hugh Jackman in the main MCU. I don't want that. I want a new actor to play, preferably an unknown like Hugh Jackman was when he played Wolverine. I just want a new Wolverine. I want all new X-Men, all new cast in the MCU. And I, it sounds like we're just getting Hugh Jackman and everything. And says, uh, Logan sets off to find the rest of this world's mutants. And Deadpool goes back to his apartment to find Blind Al in his bed. And you remember Blind Al. Love Blind Al. She, Alice, she's great. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is her only scene in the movie, which will kind of suck. But I like Blind Al. And I'm glad they brought her back like they did Mohinder. That was, that's really nice and everything. So that's the movie. I think that it sounds pretty interesting. I, I personally can't wait to see where this goes and where what they do with this. But I, I just don't know, you know, how it's going to turn out and everything. But I, I am excited to see this movie. And I think that this so far sounds really interesting. All right, you guys, that is my first story of the week. Sorry it took so long. Sorry it took so long for me to get to that story. But yeah. So for my second story this week, and I'm just going to say I, I waited for this one, too, but I want to talk about it. And I'm going to do I'm going to do a video about the strike, the the SAG strike. I, I'm late on that, too, but I'm going to do a, a, a video on that and I'll talk about that and stuff. But I just want to talk about Bob Iger gets his Disney contract extended through 2026. Um, I'm going to read, I'm not going to read this whole article. Yeah, yes, I will. Cause it's only like a paragraph. All right. Let me read this article. And then I'm gonna tell you my, my thoughts on this. So it says Bob Iger's second tenure in Disney is far from over Wednesday. The Walt Disney company board announced it agreed to extend Iger's contract for two additional years instead of Iger departing from the company at the end of 2024, as he said he would upon his return, the executive's contract now runs through the end of 2026. Time and again, Bob has shown an unparalleled ability to successfully transform Disney to drive future growth and financial returns, earning him the reputation as one of the world's best CEOs. Mark G. Parker, chairman, the Walt Disney Company, said in a statement, I don't agree, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Bob has once again set Disney on the right uh, strategic path for ongoing uh, value creation, has he, though? And to ensure the successful uh, completion of his transformation while also allowing ample time to position a new CEO for long-term success. The board determined it is the best interest of shareholders to extend his tenure, and he has agreed to our request to remain chief executive officer through the end of 2026. Um I'm not going to read the rest of this just because, yes, I will. Okay, the statement added that Iger's contract extended his, was approved uh, uh, unanimously, uh, unanimously by the board and is now set to run through December 31st, 2026. Since the hold on. since my return to Disney just seven months ago, I've examined uh, virtually every facet of our business to fully understand the tremendous opportunities before us, as well as the challenges we've been facing from the border uh, economic environment to the tectonic shifts in our industry. On my first day back, we began making important and sometimes difficult decisions to address some existing structural and efficiency issues. And despite the challenges, I believe Disney's long-term future is incredibly bright, Iger added in a in the statement. He concluded, but there is more to accomplish before this transformative work is complete. And because I want to ensure Disney is strongly positioned when we when my successor takes the helm, I have agreed to the board's request to remain CEO for an additional two years. The importance of the succession process 
cannot be over overstated. And as the board continues to evaluate a highly qualified slate of internal and external candidates, I remain intensively focused on a successful transition. Iger first became Disney CEO in 2005 and oversaw the company's acquisitions of Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilms, movie, uh, moves that turned Disney into an even bigger Hollywood juggernaut. No potential suitors for Iger's role have surfaced yet, though some insiders suspect Disney CFO Christine uh, Mc McCarthy could be a for front runner for the position. I don't know her, but we'll see. Now, as far as this goes, I just want to say, I think Bob Iger is the problem overall. He put Disney on this path. He made these decisions, put these decisions in in or in line. And then now he wants to be all like, well, and they want to, everybody wants to blame Bob Chapek, but Bob Chapek, did he make bad decisions? Absolutely. He totally made bad decisions, but Bob Iger is the one that did it first. He made all these decisions. He greenlit all these movies. They wanted to push an agenda and Bob Iger was okay with that. He greenlit Lightyear. He greenlit that Panda movie going red or turning red. He greenlit all these movies. And then Chapek had to follow through with them because they were already in the works. Um, and I'm not defending Bob Chapek and saying that he was a great choice. I'm just saying that Bob Iger was the one that made these decisions. And then everybody wanted to play Bob Chapek because of these decisions. Bob Chapek did... You know, he did cheapen the the uh, amusement parks and made it not less magical. And he did just he made decisions that were yeah, that were bad for the, the company also. But Bob Iger went on a spending spree and then he didn't have returns. And I'll tell you right now, streaming is not helping them. You know, he said it would be five years before they'd see returns. And I don't think they're ever going to see growth on that that streaming service. It's just not profitable. But I think that doing this might be a bad decision. I mean, I don't know how it's going to go forward. Hopefully, Bob Iger sees the error of his ways and course corrects that shit. But I don't see it happening. I really don't. And uh, if he if they don't, fine. That's not my problem. I'll 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 buy the stuff that I want to buy, and I won't buy the stuff that I don't want to buy. And I'll tell you right now. I'm not going to go see movies that look like crap. So I, they they really should think about course correcting. No joke. All right, that's my second story of the week. So for my third and final story of the week, you guys, you guys, I don't know if I'm like super excited about this or if I'm not super excited about this. I'm kind of excited about this, but let me explain why. So it's this is from Giant Frickin' Robot, and it says, Keith Branagh directing Gargoyles live action movie for Disney. Now, listen, I want to just say right now, I love Gargoyles. I love this show so much. Like this show has like a special place in my heart and always will be. Not only is this show really good writing, really good animation, really good voice acting. I just love this show. It's so great. Now the third season isn't the best. I want to admit that, but I still like it. I just do. I just really love this show so much. And I've always wanted to see a live action version of this. And we kind of got that. And I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. But let's read through this uh, article and then it's not very long and then we'll we'll discuss my thoughts. So apparently Disney's live action remakes aren't isolated to musicals. We've learned from our trusted and proven sources that Oscar winning filmmaker Kenneth Branagh has been tapped to bring live action Gargoyles feature to the big screen. Now, if you remember, I, I don't remember if they say it in this article because it's been like a day since I read it, but. Um, they did, uh, Kevin Branagh, he directed all of the, he did direct Thor, the first movie. And then he also directed, uh, those, uh, uh, those mystery movies, the, 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 the uh, murder on the Orient Express with that, uh, uh, Perot guy, uh, he played, uh, detective Perot. Uh, so he's, he's a good director. I don't know about him playing Perot, but whatever. Anyways, Puro, whatever, however you, Perot, however you say his name. Anyways. If you're not familiar with the property, then you missed out on what proved to be one of the most beloved, if not the most beloved animated series of the 90s. I have to agree to that it was I can remember waking up in the morning. It, it came on right before I had to leave for school. Like so me and my brother, we'd wake up 
turn on Gargoyles. Watch like the first, before the first commercial break. We'd watch it as soon as the commercial break happened. We'd book it to our rooms, get dressed for, for school. Book it back to uh, the TV to just catch the to catch it and, and start watching the show again. Then as soon as the second commercial came, we would book it back, grab all our crap and everything, and then book it back to the TV to uh, to watch this show. It was so great. I loved it. I love this show so much. All right, so the syndicated cartoon premiered in 1994 and ran for three seasons, a total of 78 episodes, and was renamed Gargoyles, the Gothic Chronicles, in its third and final season. And that's just because I think that they got rid of uh, Greg Weissman. And we'll see. So it says the series Kenneth Branagh will be adapting features a clan of gargoyles as heroes transplanted from the 10th century to the modern day. Back in the Middle Ages, most of the clan is killed while Goliath and a small group of other gargoyles are uh, cursed to be frozen in stone until their castle somehow reaches above the clouds. Goliath and his comrades awaken in the 20th century after the wealth Wealthy David Xanatos buys the castle and has it transported to and reconstructed atop his New York City skyscraper. The gargoyles protect the city uh, and its people, often dealing with various supernatural challenges as well as clashing with Xanatos. Oh, so good. So good. So it says the voice cast, including uh, Keith David, they live as the lead Goliath and the late uh, Ed Eisner up as Hudson, the Jonathan Franks, Star Trek next year, the billionaire David Xanatos. I think he could, might be able to still play David Xanatos, but if he doesn't, it's fine. According to Polygon, Kenneth Branagh will be directing a Gargoyles feature that has been discussed since the animated series was still producing new episodes. The original concept was scrapped after the series concluded, and the 2011 the writing team of David Elliott and Paul Levitt, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, ew, was tapped to write the new script. I hope they don't. That movie sucked. So it says, we don't know if Elliot and Lovett's script will be what Kenneth Branagh is working with, but we know his gargoyles won't be Jordan Peele's, uh, the acclaimed writer-director of Nope, pitched a live-action gargoyle that Polygon described as a grisly Disney up, uh, up some, uh, gosh, unsurprisingly gave it a thumbs down. Uh, yeah, I hope not that. Anyways, Kenneth Branagh is now one of the growing list of acclaimed directors taking on Disney's live action adaptations. Robert Zemeckis, Forrest Gump, uh, helmed last year's Pinocchio, ew. Guy, Guy Ritchie directed 2019's Aladdin, ew, and already set to direct Aladdin 2, not interested. The live action and, and the live action Hercules. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. Could this series cast return? There's no word yet on who Kenneth Branagh wants to cast the Gargoyles, though it would be like many of the voice actors from the animated series could reprise their roles, live action or not. It seems likely that the uh, heroes will be CGI rendered and most of the voice cast is still around and active. Not to mention Jonathan Franks is still working, uh, having re uh, recently starred in Star Trek Picard and could easily reprise his role as Xanatos. Now, I just have to say right now, again, I love this idea and this is why I love this show and I want to see it live action. Again, uh, they mentioned that the, the characters could be CGI rendered. Now, if you guys remember a little while back, they did this movie called I Am Frankenstein. And I'm going to throw up some pictures right now real quick. And these are the gargoyles from this movie. Uh, you know, and I didn't, the movie was crap, but I thought, and these gargoyles, I thought that this was a good first start to see a gargoyles live action movie. Um, these the they they're all stony looking, but at the same time, I was just like, this is a start to get a gargoyles live action movie up and running. I I loved the idea of having and and uh, you know and they could and that's why the voice actors could return to voice their characters because most of them are still live a and b it would all be CGI like these characters are you know I mean I'm not sure if they want to do the the mocap stuff for them where they put the little dots all over their faces and stuff I'm fine with that too. Um, and then just have other, you know, younger people do the action sequences and stuff for him. But I love this idea and I can't I can't wait to see. I really, really, really hope this is true and goes through because uh, I want to see it. Just I really hope that the script is is good and we get a great 
Gargoyles movie. All right, you guys, that was my final story of the week. Tell me, what do you guys think about all of this? How do you feel about this plot leak slash Deadpool stuff? All of the stuff going on with Deadpool. Are you excited about this? Or Deadpool 3, sorry. Are you excited about this? Did you like the costume that they put out for Wolverine? Uh, you know, you know. Are you total? How do you feel about the movie overall? I think it looks great. I'm excited to see it. I think the plot sounds interesting, and I I do want to see it on 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 the big screen. And then second, how do you feel about Bob Iger getting his his uh you know uh contract extended for another two years? I think me like I said before, I think it's a bad idea. Bob Iger made a lot of bad choices that everybody wants to blame Bob Chapek for, but they were totally Bob Iger, and I I think that. Yeah, it's just a bad decision. And he he made a lot of bad decisions, in my opinion. And then finally, how do you feel about them making a live action Gargoyles movies from that animated show from the 90s? Do you think it's a good idea, a bad idea? How do you feel about it? Um, but tell me what you guys think. Uh, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next week in review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.